It's Wednesday. I love nachos, but when you go into the pub, it's kind of 50 50 whether or not they're going to be great. I love lots of toppings and I like having toppings basically covering 99% of my nacho chips. And I find most of the time when you order nachos at the pub, most of my nachos are naked. There's no cheese, there's no meat, there's no veg, there's nothing. So I'm going to show you how I make the best nachos, I feel in my opinion, and how easy it is to make. And you can do so many different things with nachos. It's awesome. So let me show you a quick way to have great nachos at home. So right here, I've got one Vidalia onion that I coarsely chopped up into bite-sized pieces that we like, and I'm just sauteing them. I have a couple of pieces that have a little bit of charring on them, and I like that because of the taste. And once these are basically done, I'm then going to put in my ground beef. So I'm using extra lean ground beef. You could use anything. I've used ground chicken before. I've, gra I've done ground turkey. If you wanna do tofu, you can do that. If you don't want any meat, that's fine too. So I'm just making sure that I'm gonna have nice little pieces because I find ground beef, if you don't kinda mash it and force it to separate, if it cooks together, it just becomes one clump. And that goes for ground chicken and ground turkey as well. So I just make sure that I've got everything incorporated and I smush it with the back of my spoon so that it's I don't have all these like massive clumps because I find I like having a lot more ground beef spread out throughout my nachos than if it were just to be a clump. So I'm just basically going to be cooking this until it's about 90% there and then I'm going to be putting in my spices. Now I really like to experiment and this is actually a salmon rub but the flavor of this maple smoked spice I love on my nachos. So yes it's technically a salmon rub and that's what that company wants it to be but I love it on nachos. It gives us the sweet smoky flavor to it. I find it helpful to pre-cut all of my vegetables before I start assembling everything. So right here I'm using um, an olive oil spray and that's just to hold down the parchment paper. Um, it's sort of like a glue and it helps the parchment paper stay in place while you're loading everything up. This is where the magic starts happening. So I'm using an organic blue nacho chip and I'm not gonna completely load up the pan. I'm only going to use as many nacho chips as needed. You can see I'm putting some back that I can do one comfortable layer, and I'm putting some more back, where I can see the majority of the nachos. Because I like cheese and toppings on every single nacho chip as I possibly can, or 99% of them, that's why I wanna make sure that I'm seeing all the chips. Now I'm just going and taking my pre-cut peppers that I did earlier and just taking each one and each topping at a time. I did a bunch of different colored peppers here. I've got my ground beef and onion. So I'm slowly just putting everything around to make sure everything's coated. I'm sorry this is a little choppy. Doing it with one hand is a bit tricky. So after I did the peppers, what I did was I took my ground beef and onion mixture and I sprinkled that over all of the nachos. And now I've got a three cheese, um, three cheese Tex mix. And I'm sprinkling that all over. But I've done it with different cheeses, like Italian or whatever floats your boat. Just sprinkle it everywhere. Now that the first layer is done and you've got everything nicely coated, this is when you're going to go back to your nacho bag, grab some more nachos, and sprinkle it on top of the first layer. So I've made sure that everything's covered on the first layer and you're gonna do the same thing on the second layer. You're gonna do it just so you can basically see almost every single chip because you're gonna do what you did on the first layer on top of the second layer. And this is where you get the double layered amazing nacho chips because you've got things on everything. You don't really have any naked chips. You might on the odd one, but you're basically going to just load it on there. So if you're a person that likes olives or if you're a family that likes even pickled items like pickled onions or radish, um, you can slice those up and you can really have fun with it and really customize it to what your family loves. 
And who doesn't love nachos? So it's always a great party when someone's got nachos at their house. It's always a great dinner option to sneak in those um, to sneak in those vegetables as well. I have done shredded carrots or broccoli heads. Now, when you're done putting all your toppings on, depending on what your family likes, you're gonna put them into the oven. You're gonna set your oven at 375 and you're going to let them bake for 15 minutes. Once everything is done, you're gonna pull them out and, and oh, your house is just gonna be filled with this amazing smell. And the great thing about these nachos is once you eat all the top layers, you still have another layer of good, wholesome meat and cheese and veg and just amazing stuff underneath this first layer. Most of the time, all the nacho toppings are on the top layer and then you eat them and then it's just like naked chips underneath. Using this method, you've got a thin layer of nacho chips with all of your toppings, then another thin layer of nacho chips with um, even more amazing toppings. So have fun with it and I'll see you guys again soon.